I'm aware I'm a boat, but I identify as a male boat. Like a male box? No, a boat that is male. Specifically, one who's capable of attraction for another male. Boat? I don't distinguish. But can a boat be homosexual if the prefix is derived from the Greek word for same? When clearly we're not. Not what? The same. Who? Arthur and I. Uh. What are we talking about again? Hello, Birds. That's our word brought to you by Stephen Wright. No rights reserved, but all mites reserved. And I'm here with the haiku master himself, Tassas. How you doing? Doing really well. I'm uh, feeling pretty poetic. That's, you know, the uh, that maniac in the White in the White House is proven to be my muse. Yeah. So, this is a comedy yeah. podcast, so we're just gonna talk about how much we hate Trump for an hour. Later. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and so you can you can all start clapping now. Yeah. So so read me your your beautiful haiku that I had to share. Uh, okay, I, I will. Uh, and it took me a surprising amount of time to actually write this. <laughs> I forgot that haikus um, can be kind of hard if you have constraints. Uh, so we got Trump bombs Syria, politics irrelevant, Clinton elected. <laughs> It's haiku. Beautiful. It's on yeah. one hand beautiful, and on the other hand, it's just, it's it's haiku. Yeah, yeah, it is. And haiku is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I never understood it. I don't even like poetry, but it's like the worst form of poetry. I can, I can, I could dig like slam poetry sometimes if it's good, if oh, it's done no. right, and and the topic no. is is in, like worth it. It's possible There's for me to enjoy nothing. it. Oh man, you would have to pay me at least a hundred dollars to listen or watch slam poetry but i'm basing this opinion on one slam poet that i saw i've never seen any slam poet since and oh my god he, he was doing a, a th- and it was l ron hubbard's grandson do it <laughs> doing a, a bit about how scientology is a crazy like nut job cult <laughs> so <laughs> yeah i can send you a ton of really good uh slam poetry by these two uh feminists um they let's see what was the first one that i saw of theirs was they attack mario uh because you know mario is the Damn super the mario yeah yeah it's 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 all about the patriarchy and saving princesses and all this shit and it's literally just the most cringy thing i've ever seen and everyone in the audience in the video like screams and whoops and claps like an idiot yeah, but back in those days, they weren't really too concerned with the story. They were more interested in the gameplay, and they were just like, "Ah, we'll just have a princess, and we'll just go capture him. Let's just let's just focus on him jumping on uh, jumping on mushrooms and making sure it works." That's <laughs> you really need to see this video because it's just it's <laughs> absolutely bananas how how crazy these these people are. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I mean, Anita, Anita Sarkeesian has done like series about like why the damsel in distress trope is so problematic. But yeah, it's uh, she may be one of the worst people of the last couple of years, like yeah. one of the worst cultural critics uh, to have been brought forth by the Internet. But she would be pretty much no one hadn't it been for like 4chan spurging out and like wanting to take her down. If if they would have right. just left had it her not alone, been, had it not been exactly if 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 like gamers if <laughs> if male gamers had just you know not gotten triggered by it, she never would have gotten yeah uh, any of the acclaim that she has now. But they you know they gave her the air of being a victim so <laughs> she's here forever now yeah. thanks obama i yeah. uh, i i remember seeing her before she was really a thing and it was like there was and the only reason why i heard about this guy because there was like some other or girl the only reason wow i misgendered her wow. okay you're just <laughs> oh wow <laughs> this is getting more and more problematic by the minute i know right <laughs> this entire podcast <laughs> there was like a uh, a youtuber i don't know if he's still around he's had other incarnations because his youtube channel gets shut down from time to time but his yeah, name sucked the, the slake pliskinist 
and uh, okay, <laughs> and he used he, he he used to like comment on her videos every once in a while. But and I, and I remember like going on there and looking at it, and it was like an obscure channel. There was like maybe like a thousand or two subscribers, and the view count was pretty dismal. Like no one cared about this free feminist frequency. And then she was like, mm-hmm. "Oh, I'm doing a Kickstarter," and then that's when the whole game. Yeah, she game. raised a ton of money like overnight. Yeah. And that's what brought like everybody. It brought her to the attention of yeah. everyone. <laughs> I guess these people. It is money. pretty funny though. Like, I, it, like uh, the with some of the original videos she did. I remember there was one thing where she was saying like they they were playing like Hitman, and she was like, you know, and you're actually rewarded for oh, yeah. know, killing the strippers in the strip club in this level, and like you can see on the video when they're shooting the strippers, they're their score is getting docked the entire time. It's like, you're getting penalized for it. Like, <laughs> you, Oh my God. Speaking of hilarious, uh, and just cringe worthy gamer stuff. Have you seen this bully hunters thing? No. What is this? Oh my God, Jim, I cannot believe you have not seen the bully hunters. Okay. This is the cringiest thing I've seen ever. And it's so, it's so bad that bullyhunters.org where they had this giant live stream uh and it was all this press the website has now been taken down out of embarrassment (laughs) so they do this live stream where they talk about uh harassment in video games and how they're gonna stop it by having these elite gamers called the bully hunters uh connect with you via steam so they're focusing on counter-strike global offensive csgo um and they have this software tool where you like log in with Steam through their thing and it connects you with their bully hunters, these pro gamers that you can then ping if you're being bullied online uh, during a game. And so the bully hunter will then join your game and they'll hunt down the bully for you and kill the bully and then like leave a message like, hey, bullying's not cool. Go to our website. Um <laughs> The whole thing, the whole idea is just so broken and utterly stupid from the get-go because it's like, ooh, you killed someone in a video game where everyone's goal is to kill the other person. Yeah. Like, you came and you played the game. Okay. Um, <laughs> but the idea that, like, it this would stop bullying in any capacity is insane because my first thought is immediately, okay, I'm going to join the bully hunters. <laughs> And I'm going to fuck with them. Like, yeah. <laughs> like it's just like, imagine any, anyone who actually plays games, cause I don't really play games very much anymore, but any young man who finds this kind of thing cringy is just going to find every way to fuck with this. Um, but the, here's where the cringe actually starts is they show how this stuff works. And they have this completely staged demo where they have some, you know, some awful bully gamers saying all this like sexist stuff uh, over the chat. You know, it's it's like a sandwich. Oh, my. No, it's way worse. He's like, uh, oh, my God, you've got such big tits. I'm going to rape you. I'm going to come to your house. Like it's and it's like it's just the most insane over the top. uh, Stop trolling. Cliched. Yeah. Yeah, it was just so bad. And so then, like, they have their bully hunter go in, and the bully hunter finds the guy and kills him. And they're like, yeah, isn't that great? We <laughs> we just stopped the bully. Only the, like, this is a staged demo, and they were playing on different maps. Like, the person who called the bully hunter in, and then the bully hunter comes in, and they're in, a, like, a different map in a different game mode. <laughs> so, like, none of it made any sense. Like, none of it was real at all the victim in this case of being bullied people looked her up on steam and uh they looked at all the different names that she'd used and it was like she was one of the bully hunters as well this wasn't just like <laughs> like some random person um and at the end of course they were shilling headphones they were like yeah and uh, buy these these oh uh God. these elite gaming headphones a portion of the proceeds goes to organizations uh that help people who have been victims of video game abuse wow like yeah it's like it is unbelievable i can't even tell you how fucking awful the videos are and like the stream was recorded so it's just it's everywhere it's never going away yeah. but it was the cringiest thing i've ever seen and none of it made sense 
because it's literally it's like yeah you know how you show the bully you get your friend to come and beat him up for you it's like no that's that just makes you look like much more of a little bitch yeah (laughs) and also here's the other thing you know if someone's like calling you names and sending you messages and shit all you got to do press block or mute yep that's it yep problem fucking solved (laughs) Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the block button. <laughs> I've been kind of like trying to get away from the block. On I, Facebook. I use it very, very sparingly. Yeah. I've I've only blocked maybe four or five people, I think. On Facebook, um, I have a lot of blocks, but I um I have to go and pull them up. But I don't I don't want to even like investigate why. <laughs> right. Um, no, oh no, I know why because there was a couple people who were like, um, I'm not going to mention them by name, but um, kind of like alt righty, kind of trolly people. And mm-hmm. I'm just like, I don't even want to, before you even talk, contact me, I don't even want to deal with you. So there's a couple of those. I have some like mm-hmm. zeitgeisters who used to like report my stuff all the time to Facebook. Oh, so God. I was like, yeah. all right, you're, fuck, that. fuck this. And then I have like <laughs> various accounts of you know, like, you know, like Michael Dean or something like that, where I'm just like, I just don't want to deal with you. <laughs> but mm-hmm. Facebook, you can't just mute people. I'd rather just like mute people. Like, go ahead. Right. You can still read my stuff and like my stuff. I don't care. Um, but you're able to do that on on YouTube. If if you know how to do it on YouTube, you can do it, and that's a whole lot better. Because right. I'd I'd much rather you be able to like to still shit post on my video because that's good for the algorithm. And, yeah, and exactly. I still want people to follow me on Twitter, even if I I can't stand them or people people that I'll just like I'll agree with, but I just find annoying. Like I'll just mute them sometimes. I'm just like you're not contributing yeah. anything. So right. mute, but you know, no offense, but I just don't want to see it. <laughs> so yeah. But my block list on Twitter is still insane because because uh, <laughs> what happened was we were making fun of Cantwell for having a bunch of fake followers like he paid for a bunch uh-huh. of followers way back when. And we made fun oh, yeah, of them on that. the fiends. And Michael, Michael Dean and I, we <laughs> we were making fun of them. And then like during a commercial break, when we came back, we were getting flooded with uh like all these fake followers like either Cantwell or one of his lackeys heard us got mad <laughs> and then bought us a bunch of followers so we couldn't and I tried everything to get rid of them for the longest time and then I was just like you know what I'm just gonna sit down and I'm just gonna like I'm just gonna block like a hundred like a thousand a day I see if I, that's my goal for today is block 1,000 and I had 20,000 so oh it took me God. about a good month to get through these and I'm finding a couple of tools to help me that like but then what right. I was doing was immediately trying to unblock them as soon as because if you block someone and they're following you, it uh, makes them unfollow you. So mm-hmm. there's been times where I just didn't want people to follow me. So I'd block them and then unblock them immediately. So they were just not <laughs> following me and they just didn't realize that they weren't following me anymore. <laughs> so oh, that's funny. But I still have like a bunch of like leftover like spam accounts it's still in my block folder. I'm just like, eh, whatever. And yeah. I told anybody like if. If I've kept a you, low enough profile that, that none of that is a, a yeah. problem. <laughs> so my follower counts legit now. <sighs> Speaking of Cantwell, Cantwell's a cop. <laughs> have you, have oh you yeah, that? he's like a he's like an official informant now. Yeah. <laughs> Probably always was. But yeah. God, that guy, he's so terrible. And it, like he's his, just, his version, his story does not make any sense. Okay. No, so. and it never does. Yeah. And he always makes the most insane choice possible. <laughs> it's it's like he's he's trying to find like the most niche community possible for himself and then alienate himself from that community. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like a consistent theme yeah. with Cantwell. Just like, let's go, let's go for libertarians. Uh, you know, I'm gonna run for Senate and then shit all over that campaign and everybody's mad at me. Okay, I'm gonna be an ANCAP now because the ANCAPs yeah. don't care about voting and then shits all over them and then he gets like, okay, I'm gonna go alt-right and then, sh- <laughs> then fucking like helps dock someone to the Huffington Post. It's like, God oh damn it. God. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he burns every single bridge yeah. that he has. Um. So I think he's just he's backed himself into this. He's just painted himself into this insane corner. You know, even if it's like even if he wanted to like get out of this, it's like how does he even at this point? (laughs) Yeah. So what I don't know if you you followed the story, but I might as well not stop burying the lead. Uh, So Ricky Vaughn, I'm I'm sure you're familiar with Ricky Vaughn. He was like a guy on Twitter, alt right guy, like hardcore, Uh, like white nationalist, white supremacist guy. 
Maybe. I mean, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. He, he used to pose like a bunch of like. I believe you that he is that thing, but I don't know. The name's not really ringing, uh, yeah, it, ringing a bell. It's like Cantwell on Vice level shit that he used to post on Twitter. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And apparently he um he he got banned from Twitter, and then after he was banned, he ended up like starting to drift away from that, and then he kind of re, re, uh, like renounced it. He was like, "Oh, I'm not alt right anymore. I'm not a white nationalist anymore. Fuck all this shit. I was wrong." Um, so whatever. Um, but Cantwell was upset by the fact that he was that he said that like he didn't care about uh, white nationalism anymore, and he was like, "That makes him my enemy." And there was some guy who ended up finding this guy's docs, Ricky Vaughn's docs, and gave Mm -hmm. it to the Huffington Post. And the Huffington Post contacted Cantwell and was like, hey, is this true? And he was like, yep, that's him. Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, my God. This is after he came out as an informant. So my question is, so if he's going to be an informant and he says that his, like, I'm only. Who's going to tell him anything at this point? Yeah. You know, I'm I'm an informant. I'm an informant to to bust people for Antifa. I was like, well, you were one, never an Antifa. You don't know anything about Antifa that like I know they're not going to fucking talk to you. Yeah, like they want to kill you. Yeah, (laughs) they they don't. You don't know anything about them that like we all don't know about them. It's not like you can infiltrate any of the groups. As soon as they see you, you're going to be like, oh, you're that that Nazi from the (laughs) you're the crying Nazi from the Vice documentary. Yeah, you're the crying Nazi from the Vice documentary. We should kill you. Yeah. (laughs) And he also has a huge, huge database of like names, addresses, phone numbers, um, you know, email addresses for for people who are in the alt right because he has sold oh them God. services in some other way. And he says right. like, I, he, like I can't, I can't, I can't give that information over legally. Um, but you know, but I could verify it if someone else does. <laughs> But he was saying that, uh, like, he's like, I would, I would never yeah, give so that information he, he over. Can't give that information. He can't, or he won't. He he says he legally can't. Why is that? Because it's like a business b- decision that he made when he was like asking for money. Apparently, that's what that's what he's saying. I don't know if it's true. It's probably completely I mean, bullshit. Yeah, that sounds like it's bullshit. I mean, it sounds like he could totally give it to the cops. Yeah. <laughs> oh, to the cops. Yeah, I'm talking about. Um, like he can't like disclose it to the Huffington Post. That's that's what oh, he was saying. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, that that makes more sense. But what he There's was saying was probably like consumer protection laws or something. Yeah. Okay. Um. So like, but they did contact him, and he could say like, yeah, that's that's the right information. I guess I don't know if that's legal, but I don't I don't care if it's right. legal or not. It's still shitty. <laughs> it's still a really shitty yeah. thing to do. And he was like, it doesn't violate the non-aggression principle. It's like, yeah, but that's not the only like, metric. <laughs> well, that's the, yeah, that's the be all end all as we know. Yeah. It's- and, and, uh, I don't know where I was going with that. I mean, he's, just, <laughs> God, he's a very weird and confused person. Yeah. So, and the only thing that makes sense, the only thing that he can be an informant about is one his own case regarding Antifa at Charlottesville, which that's not really being an informant. That's just being a witness or being a party to the trial. Yeah. You're being a party to your own trial. Like, yeah, you're just defending yourself. That's not being an informant. The only thing that he could do is, is rat on other people. And it seems as though he's perfectly okay with other people doxing. So why not dox other people he don't like in the movement? Or is he even really a white nationalist? This is just he's just a fucking cop. He's <laughs> just playing a role. I I don't know, dude. Like I I have no idea. I feel like he really just painted himself into a corner. Yeah. Like and but at the same time, it's like you don't get, you don't say things like he says if you don't believe them. <laughs> like. Uh, I think but it's kind I of heard... like a salt and sea kind of, for me, like this is this is my theory that I have no evidence to back this up because uh, it's just completely circumstantial evidence I guess, but I think it's kind of like a salt and sea type situation where like he works for the cops just not to get busted for the drugs he does. <laughs> I think that's kind of, right. I think that's what it is. Like he's in trouble about drugs, but they're like, you know, if you snitch for us, uh, we'll let you uh, we'll let you keep doing your meth. Yeah. Yeah. But he was in a he was in a uh, live stream with what ba- baked Alaska, I think his name is. And he mm-hmm. like he was you could tell that like he was getting like visually more drunk throughout the uh, throughout the show. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's so he's back on the sauce. Fully again. Ad- yeah. Fully admitted that he's an alcoholic many yeah. times. 
and I remember when he relapsed when when during the ele- during election night when he thought that Hillary was going to win. <laughs> oh, that was man. beautiful. Yeah, he's just a he's just a got a, a whole mess of problems. That guy. <laughs> yeah, all of them self inflicted <laughs> and the stuff of his own making. But the beautiful part is like the alt right is kind of like crashing with him and good riddance. <laughs> I'm so tired of talking about those. Yeah, I mean, I haven't really been following anything with the alt right recently, yeah. and it doesn't seem like since since Charlotte Charlottesville, like they haven't really had anything. No. I don't know. I feel like it's like since Charlottesville, they've lost a lot of their whatever sort of, I, I even hesitate to call the word credibility, but they lost whatever mystique was surrounding them. And now yeah. like nobody, they, I don't, I don't know. Where have they been? Which is great to be able to say. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Cant- Cantwell's universally hated by people who like him, except for like, what Chairman Howe, and that's about it. Like a couple other yeah, people. Yeah, and then um, Richard Spencer tried to do a couple of speaking gigs and there was like three or four people that showed up. Like there was like three yeah, or four people who just showed up to watch him. And, and then there was like hundreds of people protesting him. Yeah. Or like 10 people protesting him or something like that, trying to punch him. And that's it. <laughs> there like, were tens of people. Yeah. Yeah, I <laughs> know. Yeah, that's the thing. It's he's like got nobody's t- showing to listen to this guy. He's got dozens of fans all over the world. Dozens of fans. <laughs> Ten, tens of fans. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So that's, it seems like it's all kind of going downhill and good riddance. Cause I'm kind of ta- ta- good, talking yeah. about it. Flush that shit down the toilet, please. <laughs> I would much rather talk about like, like all the crazy. It, does, crazy. it is funny though. Uh, Cause they were like, it was like even maybe six or seven months ago. They were like, oh, you libertarian. No, it was, it was more than that. You know, it was probably like about a year ago. Libertarians are on the way out. They're so irrelevant. Uh, the alt-right is ascending. Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, yeah, okay. No. <laughs> We'll see how you're doing in a year or two. Yeah, white nationalism goes over goes over with the public like a lead blimp. It's <laughs> just never, I know. It's never That's gonna... the thing. That's the thing is like they they really thought. I, the, and I've said this I think maybe yeah. even before on this show, but it's it's like they had this kind of mystique. They were these internet trolls and uh, pranksters who you know did these like very offensive and edgy things on Twitter and and social media. Um, but nobody really knew what the alt right was, and so you had some people who were like not establishment Republicans, being like, "Well, I guess I'm alt right." And uh, you had a lot of libertarians who flipped uh, to the alt right as well. Um, but and they were, and they were saying, "Well, look, our numbers are growing so much," but it's like you don't understand. Like regular people do not like racism, yeah. like actual racism, uh, like. They, if if you're saying the N word or you know you're, <laughs> or you're talking explicitly about, you know, separating all of the races physically and <laughs> and having you and know making maps, a white, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. You're making maps and you're gonna have like a white nation and uh, and all of this shit. Like, they really don't like that at no. all. <laughs> and as soon as they find out that that's what you're talking about, they're not gonna like you and they're not gonna listen to you. Yeah. And uh, that's exactly what happened. Yep. And I was 100% right. <laughs> yeah, especially when you're running over cars, uh, running people over with your car. Yeah, yeah. And, th- and then it's it's really, once you start murdering people, <laughs> I think it's like, that's really uh, where, you know, you lose pretty much everyone. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'd much rather be talking about things like, like what's been going on with the, with the big tech giants and the right. NSA and the war in Syria, which is, which is... It's problematic. Let's just say that. I know that word yep. is problematic, but <laughs> the word problematic isn't in itself problematic. It, it applies here, yeah. though. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it looks like we're going to be entering into a proxy war with Russia, which is nice. We need another Vietnam. It's been a yeah. while. Yeah, it's been a while since we've really had a horrible, useless conflict that's just going to make things worse. Yeah. And I th- I, it seems as though there there was like some libertarian humor podcast that used to be like, "Hey guys, don't believe for a second that Trump's a non-interventionist." Right. I can't <laughs> put my finger on which one it was. Yeah, I can't remember which one it was. <laughs> I'm sure. God damn it! It's on the tip of my tongue. I can't think of it. Yeah. Fucking lol. I will are say stupid anyway. This <laughs> the issue of Syria was right. like. <laughs> What's that? So they need to join the alt right, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, 
I will say that the issue of Syria was the one thing that I thought really truly separated Hillary and Trump from one another. That was like the one thing I was hoping that Trump would be a lot more restrained on. And until now, he actually has been a lot more restrained on Syria than Hillary would have been. Oh yeah, Hillary yeah. was explicitly calling for war with Syria, <laughs> like as like a campaign. It was like one of her talking points. Um, but in the end, it it's you know the person who's sitting in in the president's office in the Oval Office is is less important than I think most people would like to think yeah. to the overall agenda of the American state. Yeah. And I know it gives conspiracy theorists a lot of shit. I mean, I do. And they deserve it. But mm-hmm. they're right about Syria. Like, it, it does not make any oh, yeah. sense that, that Assad would do that. But I don't care. I really don't care because that's not the point. Like, I don't care if he you're actually saying did. That you're, you're saying that Assad did nothing wrong. Yeah. But actually, I don't you're, care you're say, if he did. You're saying that you approve <laughs> of Assad gassing his own people to death. Clearly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, that's okay. <laughs> Just to be clear. Just to be clear. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm for gassing, just not Jews. I'm gonna, yeah, just I'm gonna, don't gas I'm gonna, Jews. Everyone else is fine. No, <laughs> but <laughs> this is gonna turn into that Kathy Newman, Jordan Peterson interview. <laughs> so what you're saying is you're a lobster. No, um, yeah. I, uh, I don't care if he did it or not. I really don't care because that's none of our business. That's none. That's none of my business. What goes on over there? <sighs> well, here the other thing is, it's like. People have this weird thing about chemical weapons and like gas and, and all these things. It's like, yeah, sure. They're horrible. They are horrible. Like we have all we have footage from World War One and all these horrific memories from World War One um, and all these rules that resulted from World War One because of like mustard gas and, and all this stuff. Um, but that was being used on like large scales uh in battles and it was it was very very horrific but when you're looking at like what happened in syria it's like a hundred people die in a gas attack and now it's time to you know go and kill a hundred thousand people in response to that it's it's completely insane all the while it's also like Nobody cares, apparently, if, like, you're just machine gunning people to death or, like, you know, dropping, like, barrel bombs or setting them on fire, you know, using all this other stuff. You can kill hundred thousand, hundreds of thousands of people with conventional weapons. But the second you use gas, this is a line in the sand. We can't, you know, we, this is, this, this is worse than anything that's ever happened. It makes no sense to me. Yeah. I think it's just that, like, there's this gross out factor with the choice of weapon, um, and it's not really like nobody actually cares about those people. Yeah. Nobody cares about those people. Oh. It's it's just like we have this kind of like revulsion, this disgust response from the use of gas or chemical weapons there. But it's like, yeah, but people are still dying anyway. But this is not uncommon, though. I mean, think of the My Life massacre. Like no one gave a shit. Yeah. But that was terrible. Like on every single level, yeah. it was most of, one of the worst war atrocities I, I've I've seen the American government do. I mean, and there's plenty to choose from. It's one yeah. of the worst, not the worst. But it, it's still terrible. But no, like no one talks about that one. But, you know, yeah. Assad allegedly, you know, kills a couple people with, you know, with some chlorine. So it's with some bleach, essentially. And everybody yeah. loses their shit. It doesn't make any yeah. sense. But it's also the same thing. If you look at like guns, people will freak out when there's a shooting involving an AR-15. Handgun? Hmm. Yeah, nobody cares about handgun violence. Shotguns? Even though that hmm. just dwarfs. It's something like, you know, like, you know, seven. it's it's less than a thousand people a year die from rifles in the United States. I think last year it was like maybe 700 or something like that. From handguns, it's like Insane. way, way more than that. Yeah. So, it's just, yeah, people have, people have very, uh, <laughs> have a lot of difficulty trying to, um, Sorry, my computer, my screen just shut down. I'm still good. Okay, I'm still on. Um, uh oh, those Jews shutting it down. No, I can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm still here. Okay. Shut it down, uh, William. No. <laughs> go, go, go. Shut it down. No. <laughs> we had to get some all right here uh, and there, apparently. But uh. yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's like people like they have they have they are totally inconsistent on their values, but also just like. They're the, like the hierarchy of of <laughs> of which type of violence is just inherently worse. I don't know. 
It's very odd to me. I don't I don't think like a normie though, so I can't, yeah. like, <laughs> I, can't I, I can't be expected to understand them. Yeah, I'm I'm much more concerned about me getting in my car and getting in another in, an, in another accident than I am about terrorism or immigrant oh, yeah. violence. I think because it's because the media likes to put that stuff on the news because that's mm-hmm. sensational. No one gives a shit if someone dies in a car accident on the freeway right. and, unless it's blocking traffic. Right. <laughs> Otherwise, Unless they're not it's gonna... inconveniencing a million people. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's when they put it on the news, and it's only in the traffic segment. They just go like, "Oh, look at this car fire over yeah. here. Oh, it's terrible." All right, but that's that means that the I-15 is going to be shut down until until till five o'clock. So right. take the two fifteen around. So, so I mean, and that's yeah. that's what you're going to die from is that or uh, heart disease or smoking or <clears throat> you know anal yeah. butt sex in the ass like that's what you're gonna right. die from that's deadly that one <laughs> yeah anal butt sex in the ass, like ass polyps that's what you're uh-huh. gonna die from <laughs> you, you probably will die from an ass polyp but long before you ever get an opportunity to die from a terrorist attack even even in 2001 like even <laughs> like even 2001 in the world trade center yeah yeah <laughs> no uh yeah, I mean, it's it's all completely ridiculous. People have no uh, sense of how to judge risk. It's also like uh, the, people are, are treating the gun issue as if it's like low-hanging fruit. Like, well, look, if we just got rid of the AR-15s or we just had sensible gun control, we'd stop, you know, the 30,000 people who die a year from gun violence. Uh, it's It would be that easy, which is ridiculous on its face. But it's also like, okay, but a quarter of a million people die every single year in hospitals because people aren't washing their hands. Yep. Like that's low hanging fruit. Yep. Like you have a zero tolerance policy. If someone is seen not washing their hands or not, you know, doing a checklist or not doing these, these very simple things that are in place, uh, they get fired Mm -hmm. like zero tolerance End that shit right now, simply because a quarter of a million people go to the hospital and die who otherwise would not have died had they not gone to the hospital every single year yeah. just because of little stupid shit like that. So it's like if you want to actually save people and do something that, you know, doesn't violate everyone's rights, doesn't have hardly any costs to it at all, go after that. Yeah. Let's just well, prioritize a little bit. Washing your hands use, uses water. And that that can get pretty fucking expensive really quick. But for the most part, yeah, it's it's, it's le- far less cost than going to a war with Syria or building a wall or, um, you know, right. having these insane bureaucracies at the airport to, you know, to look at your balls at, through an x-ray machine. Um, right. So, yeah, yeah, I get what you mean. But, yeah, like I work at a hospital settings that will fucking kill somebody. You going in doing something with one person and then going over to the next bed, even though they're sitting right there. Right next right. to each other. Just the fact that you went over there and touched their sandwich and then yeah. went over and was like, oh, let me let me wipe this off your face real quick. That could kill someone. Yeah. Not even joking. It's, and it it's, does. Yeah. It, it, does. it kills a quarter of a million people every year. Yeah. <laughs> and what is what is the uh, death rate of terrorism in the United States? I'd really like to know that. Oh, God. I mean, it's so unbelievably low. Uh, let's see. Let's do 2015. Oh, uh oh! I hope I don't lose power. I just had a little, <laughs> just had a little flux. Oh right God! Now. There we go. So, fact sheet: American deaths and terrorist attacks by was it Stanford? UMD? I don't know what UMD is. Um, so, t- do we have two thousand one in here? Yeah. So two thousand one. Oh man! If they U.S. two thousand U.S. fatalities worldwide. <laughs> so this is even like people who go overseas and yeah, who are abroad was like less than three thousand. Uh, yeah, U.S. terror attacks in the United States uh, in 2014 is 19. Total fatalities are 18. Man, they're really inefficient, aren't they? Was that uh, when? Was, which year was was the Pulse nightclub? And is that considered terrorism? I th- yeah, that would think. But I think it was 2015, 16. Because it was it was, it was yeah. when Trump yeah, was, was running, so it'd be 2016. But the, this this study ends right. Yeah. And, this is from from October 15, so mm-hmm. they're only calculating for 14. So there was 19. And this is by the way, like 2014 is higher than it's been since 2009. In 2009, there was 11 terror attacks and 18 people died in the United States. Mm-hmm. 
and 19 abroad. 30, so 2014 is 19 terrorist attacks, 18 died in the United States. So there was 19 terrorist attacks in the United States, 18 people died. Do the numbers. There's been a ter- there's been terrorist attacks, at least one terror attack where, where some of them didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> these the, these yeah. people are not efficient killers. They're not. No, and the thing is, it's like they what they do is like it's very scary and it's very horrific, yeah. and just the way that information moves now with the internet and social media, it makes it seem a lot more personal to everyone, which is why everyone freaks out about these school shootings it's like yes every one of them is like absolutely horrific but it's an extreme outlier event yeah like extreme outlier event the idea like these people that like are like these teachers and um and whatnot who are you know like i'm terrified for my children every day in the classroom i'm just like shut up you clearly don't understand a fucking thing about statistics (laughs) <laughs> and you're teaching my like, kid math. You're a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's insane. I'm not worried about that. I'm much more worried about the massive data collection that's happening all, you know, with tech giants and them handing that over to the to the government. Right. Much more concerned about yeah. the drug war. Yeah. I'm much more concerned about the fact that there are public schools. Yeah. <laughs> It's, Which is also, it's like my, that's, that's the real solution is not, you know, arming teachers or security guards or any of this school. other shit. There's, it's there's, it's uh, just abolish public schooling. There is no reason <laughs> to think that that's going to solve anything. Okay. Now you have alive stupid kids. How does that now benefit have what? society? <laughs> alive dumb kids. Oh, let's, <laughs> so you're, let's so you're not kill them. Be in favor of the of the of the shootings. <laughs> let's not kill. Let's not let them die. But we'll we'll make them a hundred times less, uh, less less efficient at thinking reasonably, you know. And that's why we get people like Esoteric Kennedy. God damn. <sighs> I'm sorry, you cut out. What did you say? I said that's why. No, I said that's why we get people like uh, Esoteric Entities because of public schools. So mm-hmm. uh, no, I know. It's like you put these 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 kids together group them by age and like you expect like there's not going to be like horrific bullying and like some sort of social pecking order uh you get some of these kids on drugs uh oh they encourage that yeah the kids not paying attention to school give them adderall give them Ritalin, or like antidepressants And, and the thing is i actually i think that a lot of people in the libertarian movement actually put too much weight on uh, antidepressants being like the cause of school shootings yeah, and blah, blah, blah. It's cause it's like, you have no, first of all, we have no idea what's, what's going on there. It, I can definitely see like there, <laughs> it seems like there's a correlation <laughs> like for sure. Um, but it, it's also, this is a cost benefit thing where it's like, yes, it, it, some of the side effects of these antidepressants and, um, and, and other drugs that, uh, a lot of these mass shooters are on can be sometimes like homicidal thoughts and homicidal tendencies or, um, you know, making people delusional. But those are generally like a very small, 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 small fraction of, of uh, people experience those side effects. Yeah. But the vast majority of people on these drugs, a lot of the times it helps them. Yeah. So it's like when people are like, well, we need to be a lot more strict with who we're giving antidepressants to. It's like, well, m- maybe, but at the same time, like antidepressants are helping tons of people. Yeah. <laughs> like, so, yeah. And, and, yeah. and I, I've been like, I'm probably like much more like pro psychiatry than a lot of like libertarians. <laughs> like I've defended it, mm-hmm. but th- there, there is some like evidence to show that like if, well, first of all, if you're taking these drugs, you're probably the type of person that would do something like that to begin with. Like if if you're if you're, you're antisocial, yeah. you're probably going to take pills that oh, for will, sure <laughs> that'll list side <laughs> effects of antisocial behavior because they have to yeah. put that in there anyway. Like when they submit it to the FDA and they're like, you have people on there who are experiencing antisocial behavior. You're going to have to list that as a side effect, even if that was a precondition to the, the, right. the, the, exactly. the drug to begin with. Uh, yeah. So they have to put that as a side effect. But what it does sometimes, and there, there is evidence to show this, is that like if you're depressed and 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 you're you're having uh, these these kind of thoughts, and you take an antidepressant, that's enough energy to kind of push you over the limit to go like, right. okay, now I can do it. Exactly. Yeah, it may not. That's uh, do it. 
it's the same thing with uh, people being on antidepressants um, being suicidal. It's not necessarily yeah. even that it's like it's giving you suicidal thoughts. It's that you may be suicidal, mm-hmm. but you may not. You may lack the energy and the motivation to actually act on that feeling. The antidepressant gives you a like gives you just enough motivation or like lifts your your mood and your energy just enough that you it, you break that threshold of like okay now I'm I'm gonna fucking do it. Enough is enough. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what actually happened to Mini Me. What's his, what's that guy's name? The guy that just died not too long ago. Um, Mini Me. The guy that played Mini Me. I almost called him Trayvon Martin. That is not his name. <laughs> it's, um, it's name looks like Trayvon. Vern Martin. Vern Troyer. Yeah, Vern Troyer. I think. Yeah. yeah, he was he was admitted to the hospital like earlier this month for suicidal mm-hmm. de- suicidal uh, depression or whatever, and yeah. and then he they just announced that he died like the other day, and I was, and my my thought was. They're not. They're not saying what he died from. the The family's being very right. hush hush about it. So, it's, yeah, mm, he probably. He yeah, probably that sucks. Him. He and probably killed himself. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah, it is sad. Yeah. Um, he was in one of my favorite movies of all time. Fear, which one? Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. It was a brief cameo, oh, yeah. but yeah, it was when he was tripping at the circus circus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that before or after they're on ether? This is when they went, they went in, they went in, they took mescaline and then they, they huffed ether and then they went inside. Yeah. And by the time the ether okay. had worn off, they were <laughs> <Yeah>. fucking frying <laughs> on mescaline. <laughs> and he was like tugging on his leg. He was like with a handful of money. He was like, excuse me. And then he walks inside someone's skirt and disappears. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I haven't seen that movie in years. Yeah. The movie's great. That movie is great. <laughs> But yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I, I just think that uh, it, it's kind of like prison when you you send nonviolent offenders into prison, they come out violent. Con college. Generally, it's a it's a it's yeah, it's a terrible uh, system. It's the same thing with public schools. They're basically prisons for kids. Obviously, they don't not all of them have, you know, metal detectors and, you know, they're not all uh not all schools are as dangerous as the others, but hashtag not um, all schools. Not all, yes, hashtag not all schools. Um, but it's it's a it's an environment that encourages this this pecking order and encourages uh, antisocial behavior. Yep. Like you're not when this is the the kind of thing when people talk about like homeschooled kids and they're like, yeah, but how do you socialize them? And I'm like, <laughs> honestly, like let them go outside. High school, yeah, let them go outside. <laughs> Put them in activities, but holy shit, like I went to I went to public school my entire, you know, like uh adolescence and that was not a good place to be. No. <laughs> like, if you're trying to like raise a stable human being, that's it's not exactly what I think of. The first thing that comes to mind with uh when someone mentions the word socialization. <laughs> yeah. And and not only that, but these schools use the Prussian model of schooling, which is not not designed for like t- teaching kids how to think and be be no. individuals it's meant to be the way it was designed originally was during the like the early days of the industrial revolution where like kids still needed to work in order to make enough like to money to not starve it's, it's not even about money it just, there just needed to be enough stuff so that people <laughs> didn't survive like yeah. kids always had to work. That was just that was just a fact of life. No right. one ever it's thought of like, life. wait, kids have to work. That's terrible. Like that wasn't even a thought in anybody's head. Like not even Marx no. would would say that. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't. Yeah, maybe later on Marx would say that, but. Um, so well, like fuck that guy, right? Yeah, fuck that guy. But <laughs> so, but it was it was designed to teach kids how to fit into a workplace and not cause trouble like that's what it was designed to do just yeah. how to follow orders how to work on a machine line and just get them through but we don't live in that world anymore yeah so, and it's and and how to standardize behavior yeah. and and all this shit and it's like it's horrible every aspect of public schooling is terrible and there's no way I mean, to like fix obviously it. i want yeah oh god no i know that's that there's nothing that can be done to fix the public schools um but that's the root problem with i mean it's it's also like the public unschooling wanna... <laughs> that's what we need <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're gonna have public unschools <laughs> we're just gonna have a big mud pit and just let them roll around in the mud yeah no. <laughs> oh god <laughs> no but uh it's it's also it's like 
yeah, of course. Like you're going to put all these kids, they're going to be sitting ducks in these classrooms yep. and whatnot. And like, and they're going to, yeah, if someone gets yeah. really pissed off. Someone's going to fucking try and kill them. That's yep. <laughs> and then you're, yep. It's a perfect environment. You just have a pecking order. You have all these kids that are, that are being picked on all the time for being gay Some, or liking Star Trek or dragons or whatever. And then, uh, you pump them full of pills and, yeah, exactly. <laughs> just have them all sitting nicely in a row in a room. And nobody wants to admit this, but some kids are psychopaths and <laughs> yeah. sociopaths. And that, I'm being serious about that, yeah. too. Like, there, there are kids who are psychopaths and mm-hmm. there are kids who are sociopaths. Not your, you know, not all kids are good people. Nope. And so there, you're going to have there will be someone who's going to reach some sort of a tipping point, whether it, you know, whether or not they're bullied, they may just be a really fucked up person who enjoys hurting other people and they're going to go to school and they're going to get notoriety and infamy for doing it there and that's the thing these guys explicitly seek out infamy and notoriety for doing these things yeah that's why you get some of them uh some of them posting on 4chan you know the days before it happening uh no i don't buy that (laughs) i don't buy the, the 4chan prediction stuff or announcements because they're if, if you, well nine ninety nine percent of those are you know no well even less than <laughs> less than that it's you know it's such a minuscule uh every once in a while one of these guys has gone on like r9k and uh and announced like you know watch watch the news for texas tomorrow i'm gonna go and uh and kill everybody in the school or something like that and it's almost always bullshit yeah but then one of them turns out to be true yeah. you know and it's like some of the and ones that the have board, been true have been really just kind of bold. like what was the the one about the, the 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 Vegas shooter that everybody was like oh look it's proof that this was a conspiracy, but it was saying like it was posted like the day before nine eleven and the anniversary of nine eleven for that year, mm-hmm. and it said like keep an eye out for Henderson or Vegas stay away from like large areas on the Strip tomorrow, and then like three weeks later. Something happened and it was it, oh right yeah it was saying like shit. watch out for vans exploding it it was completely like not it <laughs> but it's kind of like the Alex Jones thing everybody feels like oh Alex Jones predicted nine eleven but it's like but what about all the other things that Alex Jones predicted that didn't come true like the hundreds of millions of, if you predict every oh, day of course. There's going to be a shooting in Texas tomorrow. There's going to be a, a, a terrorist attack on uh, in, in Pittsburgh tomorrow. And you just keep doing that multiple times every show, yeah. every day. A, one's going to come out right. Yeah, he it's he, he predicted, uh, you know, like 40 of the last three terrorist attacks. Yeah. But he also predicted like trillions of <laughs> that didn't come true. So well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. He yeah. predicted forty of the last three of them that that happened. <laughs> so <laughs> I see what you did. <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah. Yeah. No, I no, no, I I know what you're saying, but uh, David Freeman has but, talked about like a lot a lot of the economic predictions that people make. It's like, well, mm-hmm. there's like two ways of predicting things. There's one you like you just actually actually predict it. Uh the other way is you know, like you make a bunch of predictions and when one comes true, you you know, you you, you came you, you claim out. credit as like a guru for it. Yeah. And then the other Even way most of your, your your predictions are shit. Yeah. Or or the other or the other way is you kind of help set things into motion. Like he was talking about how his dad had, um, had a bet with like Stigler or something like that, and he was like, he was like, I, I bet you I, I can guess it accurately like what the waitress is gonna say, uh, and he was like, no, he was like, well, how about this? Like, I can get, I can guess like the the letter, the first letter, or I can. Um, like whatever he's and, he, uh, and then Milton Freeman was like, okay, fine, I'll, I'll bet you like ten bucks, and and and, and that the letter will be Y, and he was like, okay, and he was like, do you do you do your restaurant serve beer? Yes. <laughs> Oh, there you go. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah, can, yeah. yeah, you can make them come true. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, the, the other thing is, like the the media though, like they they're always rushing to find you know who did it, who did it. You know, uh, it's every time it's Sam Hyde, and he just keeps getting away <laughs> with it. Um, but but now, but they're you know they're always rushing to to you know find out who it was and speculate on why they did this and blah 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 but it's like yeah like you're giving this guy fame yeah it's and they know it too they absolutely know it and there's also been studies that show that 
when they do this, it spurs copycats. Right. Like statistically, it, it, there's a statistical uh, like enough to be like to to warrant a policy of saying like we're not going to announce Don't. a shooter or give right. A we're not going to say the person's name. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Unless he's at large. If he's at large, then yeah, I'll show his picture and his name. Sure. Yeah. 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 If it, if if he's at large and he's like, there's a possibility he's going to continue killing people. But it's like, you know, once <laughs> once it's done, they catch the guy or he shoots himself on the site. Like whatever it is. Like, don't fucking give him the satisfaction. Don't let his name, you know, every, we we all know the names of the Columbine shooters. Like, and that's what these kids want. They want to be bigger than Columbine. They want to be bigger than Sandy Hook. They want to be now bigger, I'm sure, than uh, the Florida school. I don't remember what it's called. Um, and Parkland. I, I, Parkland. I know it's yeah. Parkland because it's like the title of one of my favorite movies. It's great. Yeah, they, I mean, they, they want to be bigger and more notorious than than those shooters because it's better than from their perspective it's better than being nothing you know so i don't care about immigrants coming here and voting democrat (laughs) i know i know whatever (laughs) so what they're gonna come here and vote democrat so what what are they gonna what else what's the alternative vote republican yeah I know. How's that been working out? We we got Republicans yeah, right so now. We're, we're going to war already. Uh, <laughs> they've already had. Ex- they're already expanding the state. They're now talking about like closing down trade, which is very libertarian. Very libertarian, yep. right? Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, the, the Republicans are not your friend. They're not. They just pretend to be your friend when it's election time, and then when election time comes, they're like, "All right, it's time to bomb everybody and take all your right. money and." take all your money through inflation but they're going to give yeah, you a little that, bit through tax breaks and this is why there's just there's no there's never an advantage to supporting political action in my yeah. opinion because the the idea that the republicans are actually going to do something that we like is like it happens every once in a while by accident but when they get power the first, you know, they, they, they use it explicitly to do things that we hate. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, there's just, and, and it's like this every single time there's no evidence to believe that they will ever, ever, ever reduce the power of the state. Yeah. Reagan was like, Oh yeah, we're going to shrink the state. Let's create the department of education. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and thanks. I mean like, and it's not totally true. Like there are on some margins, like, they sometimes do some good, like Trump has reduced the, you know, some of the uh, federal register as, as did Reagan. But again, this is, this is, and like, okay, cool. I'm totally, I'm not going to complain about that, but it is something that can be completely reversed because the laws that, uh, that are passed are still on the books. The federal register is just the actual regulations, how those laws are put into practice. And that's at the discretion of the executive branch. So, that administrative law, all of that can be once Trump's out, that can be turned over in a heartbeat, just yeah. like he overturned all of Obama's stuff. Yeah, and now all these alt right people are turning on Trump for various reasons, or just just mm-hmm. leaving the alt right. Um, and, then, <laughs> and then you have his base who are who are kind of like split. There's some people that are like, no, 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 no. He he's got some information that we don't have. Like I don't care. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> or it's you know they're like I, that's it. I'm done. Chess. Yeah, it, but he, he didn't really. He didn't. <laughs> it's not like he won in a landslide anyway. Um, yeah, so chances are he's probably not going to get reelected. And what's who's that guy that was? Oh, was I don't working, know about that. He was he was working. No, I don't know because who, who's who could beat him right now? Biden. Biden could beat him. Okay, that's that's, that's fair. Biden. Biden could beat him. My prediction. Biden, my prediction for the election. Because everybody was like, it's going to be Bush or Clinton. And I was like, nope, it's going to be Biden. Biden's going to be president. Um, if. Biden, but Biden, didn't, uh, but Biden didn't run. So, right, yeah. Ex- so, uh, like, just assume, just for the sake of argument, that Biden is out of the picture. Who could beat Trump? Well, it's definitely not Bernie. Bernie doesn't. Bernie kind Bernie of. Bernie would Yeah. Bernie kind of hangs hangs on a little bit in the fringes too much for for most people, and most people are yeah. like they'll hear the word socialism and go no, no. Yeah. Um. So definitely not him. I fucking really wish was his name Jim Webb. I wish Jim Webb was like what what the Democrats were. That'd be great. What's this? Is that his name, Jim Webb? I think so. Yeah. I think so. The guy that was in, in like one debate and was like, "Yeah, I killed a yeah. lot of people." Fuck yeah, I killed this guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no. Um, 
Mm. Definitely not Just, not Pelosi or, or any of the senators or oh God, not, no. none of those people. Boxer, none of them. Warren. Oh, God, no. Warren couldn't do it. No, Warren couldn't do it. She's imagine, imagine, oh, my God, just imagine them debating. That'd be <laughs> glorious. <laughs> I, w- I, I would have I paid good money to see, like, Bernie and Trump debate for them to that be the final funny. nominees. That would have been great. It, like, it would yeah. literally be a meme election at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm sitting here thinking, like, because he's so unpopular and he's, like, the left is just going to hate him more and more and more by the next election. Yeah. Uh, that of course they're never going to vote for him, but whoever they pick is going to be some insane, terrible choice yeah. or is going to be so boring. Like they'll either try to like out Trump him by, by choosing someone crazy and insane. <laughs> and you're not going to out insane Trump. You're not going to out maniac that man, or they're going to get someone who's super boring and he's going to put on a big show and he's going to win. Like it's like, so- I, now that I'm thinking about it, I completely forgot. There's there's two people that could that are that are possible to to run. They're they're probably going to run right, and that's Oprah mm-hmm. and Zuckerberg. Oh, yeah. And these people are like monsters when it comes to like social media, which is why yeah. Trump won. So it's possible. I cannot they could... imagine a world in which Zuckerberg won the presidency. <laughs> President that, like, Data. He, yeah, he's so, <laughs> he is just so off-putting and weird like he he <laughs> it's the meme is that he's not a human being yeah you know? and it's <laughs> easy to see why that's a meme <laughs> oprah that would be an incredible sight to behold <laughs> oprah versus trump <laughs> the battle yeah i don't know battle the thing of is, the I, tv show stars I, again i thought that he was not going to win the first time yeah so and i was very very wrong about that so i don't try to make predictions on anything though i was glad to be wrong i'll admit it i was glad to be wrong yeah yeah if you if you watch the live stream it's still on my youtube channel if you watch the live stream of of me like because we were i was going i was watching cnn and fox Uh (laughs) and we were like recapping the election or just watching it as it was happening and i was sitting there going like just, just fucking say it, goddammit, CNN. Just admit it. You fucking <laughs> lost. I didn't want him to win either, but well, I didn't want him to be president from the be- beginning. But if I had a choice, yeah, yeah Trump. Um, or actually, no, I, th- I said Hillary because I I can I know her evil. Like I I can right. predict it. I can't right. predict Trump's evil because I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't really have a history. So I, I was, still can't predict Trump's evil. Like yeah. it's still he's so all over the place. Yeah, no, I don't know. So I was it like, was t- <laughs> "Fucking just, just admit it, God damn it!" <laughs> I was like, "Do it already." And then, but it's then I was like, like now "Oh yeah, I'm, I'm going like- in and out tonight because this is this is a glorious day." <laughs> I went to in and out <laughs> during the live stream. I fucking got in my car, <laughs> live stream from my mobile phone. It was beautiful. Um, yeah, it's like I, I don't know, like because now I'm thinking, like now that I've like I feel like I kind of understand why he won the first time, and like looking forward. To I'm just like, I don't know if he can be beaten again. Like, yeah. but at the same time, I'm wrong all the time. So oh, you know what? I, I'm, <laughs> he might lose horribly. <laughs> let me just say this. Like, I'm pretty good at predicting like what people will do when they get in office. Cause it's pretty easy to predict, right? It's, it's not that hard. State mm-hmm. is going to state. Um, but it's, it's, it's easy. It's not, it's, it's hard to predict like elections. So I'm out of the election market. Like don't listen to me. Like, I'm not going to tell you who's going to win. Like yeah. I, I thought that like okay Roy Moore, it's it's fucking Alabama. He's not gonna get it. He's not he's not gonna get. You know he's not gonna lose. He's a Republican. Right. Wrong. I uh, was wrong about Trump. Was wrong about the Senate. Was wrong about the Congress. So, I'm not the person to talk about elections. Yeah. But when they yeah, get exactly. in. Listen to me, because I was telling you fuckers from the beginning, he was not a non-interventionist. He was going to fuck around overseas, and he did. Uh, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't think he was going to drain the swamp, and he didn't. Yeah, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, oh, et, cetera yeah. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, I think we were pretty solidly correct on on all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, but the the actual him getting elected, I'm just like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what planet I live on anymore. <laughs> no. No. Here's the thing, though, like it's like, and, and this is the the weird realization is that it's like American politics is never going to be less, less weird. Nope. Like it's never going to go back to like normal. I'm pretty sure that Trump just ensured that politics is going to be insane from now on. Yeah. 
It was this weird cocktail of like the internet and social media and just this bizarre personality. <laughs> you know, that, like this very, very unique, crazy man came in and just absolutely wrecked politics for all time. Yep. <laughs> Which is kind of amazing. <laughs> like the like we're gonna like things are just gonna get weird. Like even like when Trump is gone, what's gonna happen next? Like who's like it's like say have- you know he loses next time or he gets elected next time like whatever the trump presidency comes to an end who are who's running the next time what is that going to look like beat him or who who will be yeah, running uh to get his place uh i think it's going to be someone who's got clout on social media i, th- I think the whole kind of world the world view of we need to elect people who have like the squeaky clean background and have like legislative history that's all out the window. I think that's all gone. Mm-hmm. I think those days are over um, or are are slowly becoming over. It's not completely over. Mm-hmm. But um, I th- yeah, I think because because the way that social media is, is, is happening now that it's going to be the person who's got the most Facebook likes uh, on their mm-hmm. on their posts or the most retweets or uh fucking his tumblr thing no uh or who has you know who has the most followers on you know who who shows the most you know closest to the nipple on uh, on instagram i think that's what right. it's going to be so i think and in there was uh what's his name bill whittle i don't i don't know if you're familiar with bill whittle he's like a conservative kind of commentator Mm-hmm. Like he he predicted that he was um he was pre- well first of all he was predicting that Mitt Romney was going to win in a landslide, <laughs> uh, but after that happened he did a stratosphere <sighs> episode and he was like upset like he was like distraught that that Obama got reelected, and mm-hmm. there was a portion of that where he was going like, you know who's going to be the next president is someone on social media someone who someone who's in the mainstream of of, of popular. Uh, you know, whatever, like a celebrity of some kind or, you know, mm-hmm. like, a, like a big Twitter person or something like that. And he was yeah. right. And, he, and you know, he, he was kind of doubling down on like he, he was happy. Like when, when Trump won, he was like, see, I told you that <laughs> like he, he hated right. Trump kind of. Well, Trump was in his first pick for by any means. I think he liked Rand Paul or something like that. But um so he, he was almost he was kind of bordering on never Trump, but he yeah, but I think that's right. Like the the way the way the, the society is now, they're much more interested on who's popular on TV, who's popular on Twitter, who's popular mm-hmm. on YouTube, much more than you know who is the most statesman like. Right. It's who who who's got the most interesting retweets, who's in everybody's face all the time, and it ain't fucking Obama, you know. It's Trump. Yeah. <laughs> it's Oprah. Right. It's Zuckerberg. It's Kim Kardashian. Oh, oh God, God help us. Just, please, please let Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> please, Kanye. Debate. How about someone <laughs> like Kanye? Yeah, West. seriously. Kanye 2020. <laughs> or oh, Gucci my God. Con- Kanye versus <laughs> Zuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it'd be amazing. Molyneux, God. No, I can't, I can't run. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's going to get so much weird from here on. Mm-hmm. It's great. Yep. So anyhow, yeah, I gotta uh, I gotta wrap up. I think. All right, but we should talk briefly about what your thoughts about Trap Mask Replica is, since you've been trying to trap. Oh my through god! It. Yeah, so I'm like I'm like halfway through it, and like it is so bizarre. It's it, the thing is, it's interesting. Like it's it's not like garbage. It's just like so weird and off kilter at first you think it's garbage and then you go like, yeah Wait, there's something there no i know it's <laughs> like, no, there's like definitely something going on here like i don't get it but like it it's very compelling but i don't think i like it <laughs> you, you're not gonna like it your first seven times listening to it and then by yeah. like by eight you're obsessed like you can't stop listening to it and start yeah. noticing like there's like a really interesting bass line going on here in the back. <laughs> this one particular guitar is actually playing some really interesting stuff, but it's just yeah. not coming together with all the other instrumentations. But at the same time, it does. And anytime yeah. there is some kind of cohesion going on, like Elaguru, where it starts going like Elaguru, yeah, it's, it starts like it starts <laughs> like breaking down like right after that. <laughs> You're like, what, yeah. wait, what just happened? You just, you oh had it, God. and then you just let it go, <laughs> and they're doing it on purpose. It's insane. <laughs> it's in, it's insane how he wrote it. It's insane like his 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 methodology behind it. Like it was insane like how he was treating his band members in order for them to learn how to play it so right. that they could play it live. 
Like they play this this so- these songs live. They play well, not anymore. He's dead. Uh, yeah, but they used to play these songs live. God, that's fucking crazy. Where like one instrument's playing seven five timing, the other one's playing five five timing. <laughs> like, and the drum is playing both. <laughs> so it sounds like he's just randomly hitting drums, but he's yeah. actually playing two rhythms at once. <laughs> And meanwhile, Captain Beefheart isn't even like when he was recording, he didn't even have the headphones on when he was recording. He was oh just listening God. to bleed through from the studio. Yeah. So that's why it sounds like he even he's off time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Holy shit. What was what was the, the quote that it was from the New York Times? that was like he makes Tom Waits sound like Julie Andrews. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty it's much. Beautiful. So, yeah. Listen to it seven times and then get back to me. I will. Yeah, I'm. De- I, I definitely am going to keep. Oh, I think you cut out. Oh, I'm. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm definitely going to continue listening to it, yeah. and uh, I'll I'll report back when when I've <laughs> given back. it its proper, its proper seven or eight listens. Yeah. So next time you come on next year, uh, whenever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You seem like you're kind of more free on Sundays, right? So. Uh well. I am, except that I'm starting a role-playing game on Sundays oh. uh, ne- next week. So <laughs> I put on my robe and wizard hat. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. Yeah. All right, man. Thanks for coming on. Oh, yeah, do you no want to you plug anything? You're t- do you, do you active on Twitter yet? I have, no, I have nothing. Nothing to plug. <laughs> this is the this is the most active thing I do now when I'm keeping my head down. So. Sun- Sunday. <laughs> Yeah. Follow him on Facebook. He likes to shit post a lot. <laughs> that you shit post a yeah. lot. And I'll turn you into me where you're just posting nothing but <laughs> Trump has Trump Trump has Trump. <laughs> just yeah. destroy Facebook. Uh, yeah. I'll talk to you later. All right. Yep. Hail Satan, Hail Zeno, whatever you want to say. <laughs> <laughs>